Hello and welcome to another Learn the Electrics video. Today we will be talking about a subject that is very often not fully understood and that is ring circuit testing. As with all electrical testing make sure you are working safely and ensure safe isolation. Always work within your own ability and skills. Almost every domestic property in the UK has one or more ring circuits. It is often said that if you can test a ring circuit, then you can test anything. And there is a lot of truth in that. But to be honest, ring circuit testing is actually quite easy. There are just a few basic rules to follow and a simple method and everything drops into place. A few other countries also use ring circuits. These were developed during the Second World War when copper supplies were scarce. It was a way of using less copper. Here we show a very basic drawing of a ring circuit. There are only four sockets shown here, but in practice there could be many more. However, the testing method remains the same. On this drawing, starting with the green and yellow earth cable at the top, which should be properly called the CPC, the cable leaves the consumer unit and travels in a clockwise direction, visiting all parts of the circuit before it returns back to the starting point at the consumer unit. There is only one cable, but two ends. This is the same with the blue cable and likewise the brown cable. For this video, we will base everything on standard grey 2.5mm twin and earth cable. At the consumer unit there will be two ends of the same twin and earth cable and here we have marked them as A and B. Inside the consumer unit the two browns will be connected together into the same circuit breaker. The two blues will be connected into the neutral bar and the two CPC conductors will be joined together into the earth bar. The first step after safe isolation is to separate the two cables and all six conductors from each other. Now we can test each pair of conductors for continuity using the low ohms resistance setting on our meter. Check that your meter is working correctly before starting. Connect between the two brown or live conductors. We should get a low ohms reading that will depend on the length of the circuit. As a guide, it is going to be around one ohm for most domestic socket circuits. Maybe half an ohm, maybe one and a half ohms. Every circuit will be different because every circuit will be a different length. If you start getting five ohms or large readings like this, then you've got a problem. In this example, we have recorded 0 0.76 ohms, so we can write this down. This is known as little r and the number 1 with a small letter r. The little r tells us it is an end-to-end -end test and the 1 tells us it is the brown or line conductor. Now we can repeat the test using the two blue or neutral conductors. Because the line and neutral are the same size conductor, the reading should be about the same. Here we record 0 0.76 again. This is known as little r, little n. This tells us it is an end-to-end -end test of the neutral conductor. And now we carry out the same end-to-end -end test between the two ends of the CPC or earth conductor. This is little r with a number 2 and this signifies the end-to-end -end test of the CPC. With twin and earth cable, the CPC or earth is smaller than the line or neutral. This means the resistance reading should be higher. It is actually about 1.67 times bigger. So 0 0.76 for the line means about 1.27 ohms for the CPC. And we can write this down too. We now have our three resistance values. 
These are line to line or little r1, neutral to neutral or little rn, and earth to earth or little r2. We now know that each of the conductors is continuous from one end to the other, including where the conductors are joined at each of the sockets, and that they are actually connected together. Here we can see the relationship between the three conductor resistances. Line to line will have a certain value, 0 0.76 ohms in our example. Neutral to neutral should be about the same value. And earth to earth will be about 1.67 times greater than line to line or 1.27 ohms. Now we need to know the combined circuit resistance, which is known as big R1 plus big R2 or just R1 plus R2. It is the resulting resistance from the line and CPC or earth conductors being in parallel with each other, as would happen during a fault. Because they are in parallel, the resistance will be lower, and there is a formula for this. We can also measure this parallel resistance with our low ohms meter, and we will look at both methods here. To calculate R1 plus R2, do the following. Step 1. From our earlier measurements, add together little r1 to little r2, and we get a number. In this case, 2.03. But we have not finished yet. And this next step is what most people forget to do. Big r1, r2 is found by dividing this number, little r1, little r2, by 4. This is an effect of parallel conductor paths. So in our case, we have 2.03 divided by 4. Our answer is 0 0.52 ohms. And this is your big R1, R2. And save this number for later comparison when testing. Now, to measure the combined resistance, if you're going to get confused, this is the time. But stick with it, understand this, and you will be over the hurdle. If you can do this, you will be able to tackle any testing in the future. Using a terminal strip, link the brown of cable A to the earth of cable B. Using the next block of the terminal strip, link the brown of cable B to the earth of cable A. This is known as a crossover test. This drawing shows what we have just done. You can see that the green and yellow conductor A at the top is connected to the brown conductor B. And the green and yellow conductor B is connected to the brown conductor A. This is another view of the same drawing, just tidied up a little. If you follow the top conductor from box A and travel clockwise, you will see that to return to the starting point, you must trace along the whole of the green and yellow conductor and all along the brown conductor. This means that any measurement we now make will include all the line and all the earth or CPC conductors of this circuit. I would recommend using a three pin socket adapter for the next steps. It is a lot easier than removing socket covers and some meters come with a three pin lead that will do this job for you. Set your meter to low ohms resistance, check that it is working correctly and that the leads are nulled out. We have connected line and earth together at the consumer unit, so now we tested each socket with our leads in the line and earth terminals. Life now is easy. Test the resistance at each socket on the circuit, make a note of each result because you will need these numbers soon. You should find that every socket is about the same value. There is always a very slight variation on every circuit. Continue for all sockets. There might be 10 or 12 sockets. Test them all. It is part of your job. Continue to the last socket and compare the results of all the sockets. Within a small margin, they should all be about the same value. In our example, they should be around 0 0.52 or 0 0.53 as a guide. 
and they should be similar to the calculated value that we had earlier. On the test certificate, record the highest reading. This reading is your worst case scenario. If this is an acceptable reading, then so are all the others. This number will form part of the ZS number for this circuit. A quick recap then. Make sure you are working safely and remember safe isolation. Separate the cables A and B. Test end to end on each pair to get little r1, little rn and little r2. Make the crossover link and test at each socket. Record all the results. And the highest reading is your big R1, R2 value. Don't forget to remove all the links and reinstate the circuit. Job done. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please click the subscribe button. It helps us and it means you won't miss our next video. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again in the near future.